We feel that the evidence to suggest a highly capable, technologically advanced, intercontinental, possibly interstellar civilization once flourished here on our planet is now irrefutable. The questions we now feel need answering do not now regard whether they existed, but surround their true origins, actual age, and indeed final destination. We would, of course, be the descendants of this past civilization. Yet the proof of global flooding, past cataclysm, and a technological reset occurring within human history, we would hope, is clear for all who peruse our channel to see. With such an event experienced by a civilization, once capable of lifting and building with unimaginably huge megaliths, one would presume that post-event one would encounter primitive dwellings, yet built partially with these now dwindling technologies, which would eventually become lost knowledge. We feel that, indeed, many ancient dwellings that can be found all over the planet, in particular the United Kingdom, currently claimed as Neolithic, are suitable candidates to support this supposition. Constructed with enormous, unexplained, mysteriously lifted megaliths, are these sites remnants of an advanced lost civilization? We hypothesize that the builders of such still retained limited knowledge and or technologies left from their now lost civilization, allowing them to create stable, immovable, yet primitively constructed dwellings, which we still cannot explain today. Furthermore, and the purpose for our video, the extremely ancient, little academically shared dwelling tucked away among a remote region of Russia. Located within the Caucasus Mountains, hundreds of similarly aged megalithic monuments, which the Russians call dolmens. Uncannily similar to the ancient trilithons found within the UK, however, it seems that these remaining remnants possibly of the same lost civilization, still possess something which allowed them to carve perfectly spherical holes through enormous megalithic stones. Just what were these ancient people using to create these ancient structures? Or indeed, the perfectly cut spherical doorways within? Who built the ancient dolmens that can be found dotting Russia? The ancient trilithons found dotting the United Kingdom? Are these structures, as we have suggested, remaining relics left by a civilization who had just experienced drastic cataclysm? If this is not the case, why do they possess characteristics indicative of lost knowledge, yet appear to be of such a primitive design? We find our hypothesis and the supporting evidence highly compelling. President Putin recently visited one of the most mysterious places on Earth, the ruins of the ancient town of Arkheim. Historians, archaeologists, and UFOologists have spent many years trying to unravel the secrets of this place. Which nation was living in Arkheim more than 40 centuries ago? How did people of such ancient civilization manage to accomplish the incredible technological progress on Earth there? The Archim Valley was supposed to be flooded in 1987. Local authorities were intending to create a water reservoir there to irrigate drought-prone agriculture. However, scientists found strange ancient circles in the center of the valley. Authorities gave archaeologists 12 months to explore the area. Scientists were shocked at what they discovered. However, it is not the unusual earthworks that have attracted investigators, but rather what was recently discovered beneath. A discovery which has seen several renowned alien investigators rushing to this remote and forgotten slice of the Russian landscape in search of the undeniable proof that we are not alone. Researcher Maria Makarova and her team were able to unearth a remarkably well-preserved skeleton in the ground beneath the site. However, it soon became evident that this was no normal skeleton. And although the research team have attempted to disagree with the clear possibility of it not actually being human remains, choosing to suspect that the skeleton somehow belonged to a woman from the Sarmati tribe, which lived in what is now Ukraine, southern Russia, and Kazakhstan about 2,000 years ago. It unfortunately appears 
that this is an attempt to discredit the real possible value of these remains. This being a logical move by all professional researchers funded by an academia, which would not appreciate such honest and clearly forgivable assumptions based on current evidence being publicly disclosed. For example, firstly, the Sarmadia tribe may have practiced head binding. However, this practice is largely believed to have been located in other parts of the world, and the lack of any additional finds within the tribe supporting this assumption would seem this is a deceptive conclusion to arrive at. Additionally, when head binding was undertaken, unmistakable evidence of such is left upon the skull. Deformed cranial napping, the stitching of the skull will not appear as normal, yet, alas, the stitching will always be present and easily identifiable. Though astonishingly, this skull clearly shows no evidence of binding on the photographs. What's more, and perhaps more pressing, is the lack of any cranial stitching visible whatsoever. This stitching of the skull plates is part of human growth. We all have them, yet this skeleton does not. What do you think regarding the find? An abnormal tribe member buried beneath an extremely ancient, mysterious site? Or something else entirely? Throughout the ages, countless reports of unexplained and baffling discoveries have been reportedly made deep within the mines of Earth. Regardless of the type of mine, or indeed its depth, it seems that these peculiar stories continue to surface, and usually only by word of mouth. Often attached to these fascinating tales, you will find stories of these artifacts being seized, destroyed, or simply reburied. We are often confronted with an apparent cover-up, vast resources and manpower being harnessed to hide these facts from the world. The motives for choosing to conceal such artifacts from the world could indeed be endless. Though regardless of motive, we feel it is imperative that we continue to expose these stories to the Earth if we have compelling witnesses and unmistakable evidence of a cover-up. Deep beneath the city of Donetsk, within the Rostov region of Russia, a large foundation of sandstone can be found, something known as rock shield of Carboniferous age. It is about 300 to 360 million years old and is lined with distributions of coking coals that are also of around the same age. Astonishingly, Mr. Kasatskin has discovered, upon the roof of this shaft of coal, an imprint of a chariot wheel, an imprint undoubtedly made before the rock had formed around it. He also discovered another imprint, a small distance further along the shaft. It must be noted that these imprints have remained buried deep within these seams of rock for many millions of years. If a scientific analysis could have been undertaken upon this artifact, it could have shaken our understandings of world history, just like so many other artifacts we have been made aware of, all but a few now stolen from the public domain. Upon realizing the implications of his discovery, Mr. Kasatskin, an extremely experienced foreman in ventilation and safety engineering, specializing in seismic prognosis, thankfully took several photographs of his miraculous and now concealed discovery before officially reporting it and requesting a scientific evaluation. When his boss notified the owners of the mine in the hopes of getting an analysis of the artifact with an attempt to preserve it, to his boss's surprise, they demanded he continued the work through the shaft so that it could be subsequently flooded, which is unfortunately what has occurred, making further exploration of the sites impossible. He stated that he's investigated further regarding the Western Mines history with the fellow miners there and was able to confirm the existence of the other print within that mine. It had been damaged by blast hole driving and was little mentioned, though it was indeed there. He was sometimes in this cut, he said, and got to take a good look at it. He says that he was surprised, but also somewhat afraid to admit that these objects are of artificial origin. We, on the other hand, are excited by such a premise and will keep you posted on any further developments regarding the mine.